Hi folks, in this tutorial I'm going to quickly show you how the pruning feature works in Faceware Retargeter. Uh, right now I'm demoing in Maya, but no matter what 3D application you're using, the pruning feature works exactly the same way so you can apply these concepts to your project. Now the purpose of pruning is that by default uh, our tool, as well as pretty much every motion capture tool out there, is going to give you very dense data by default. If we take a look at the graph editor here you can see there's a keyframe uh, represented by these black dots on every single frame. Now if you're an animator um, looking at this uh, will probably make your stomach turn a little bit. It's really hard data to edit if you do need to go in here and make any changes later on or clean it up. Um, you know even this simple curve here is uh, it's just gonna be a mess. You know you're gonna have to come in here and delete keys. You're gonna have to move way too many things to get a simple result. So the idea behind pruning is to make your life easier. It's to intelligently reduce the amount of keyframes you have overall so that you still get really nice animation but you don't have as much data to deal with. It's easier to clean up, it's easier for you to work with. Um, on top of the fact that if you are working on a game project, a lot of game engines um, do their own uh, keyframe reduction and sort of compression. So the less keys you put into the game engine, the more likely your animation looks the same in the engine as it does in Maya. So this is a very useful tool. Now the way it works is currently I've got my mouth pose group selected. Uh, it is important to note that uh, whatever pruning value I select here for this group only applies to that group. So only the controls in the mouth group are going to get pruned to this level. Now right now it's set to zero so that means there's no pruning going on but I could set this to say 30 percent and I'm gonna go ahead and click retarget and this is gonna take a second to uh, remove the current keyframes and then it's gonna lay down a brand new pass of animation but with only 70 percent of the original amount of keyframes. So whatever number you type into pruning, that's how much it's going to remove. So whatever's left over is the percentage that will remain. So now if I click on my same curve here, you can see I've still got my animation. I've still got my, uh, my ups and downs and all my major curves, but I've got less keys here to deal with. Um, now this value, you can sometimes go pretty high with this without being too detrimental to your animation. So I'm going to go 65. And what this is going to do is, you'll notice I have five poses here. Now, when I use pruning, it's going to ignore my poses, meaning it's not going to change any of the keyframe values on my poses. It's, uh, it knows not to touch those, so they're kind of like your, your key points there. Everything else in between, it's going to intelligently remove keys from. So here you can see that I've still got most of my animation but my curve is a lot more mellow. Now how high you go with this value is totally up to you. It's uh, it's kind of a you know a shot dependent thing if you've got a shot where there's a lot of movement and somebody's talking really really quickly and that dialogue is extremely important you might want to keep this value a bit lower on the mouth but uh, you know if it's a case where maybe they're in the background or or even maybe it's um, you know something where there's just not a lot of talking going on you can remove a lot more keyframes without it being noticeable in your animation now the other thing that's really nice about pruning is it's non-destructive meaning if I decide that 65 percent is just too high and I want to go back down to 25 I can do that and what this is going to do is again it's going to completely erase my animation and then lay down a totally new pass so you can tweak and tweak and tweak that number until you're happy with the result till you've found a happy medium between the fidelity and the uh, amount of data you're getting uh, without worrying about doing it too many times so you can see it's gone back down and I now have 75 percent of the original data that I had in the beginning and the same is true for zero if I just want to turn off pruning completely all I need to do is set it to pruning uh, sorry set it to zero and click retarget again I'll have all my original data back and I can kinda of start from the beginning now we get asked the question a lot uh, do you recommend creating all your animation at the zero values and then adding pruning on top and personally that is the way I work I will leave these values at zero I will work on my shot and I'll get it completely to a point where I'm uh, happy with it where I consider it finished with retargeter and then I will start bumping up the pruning uh, you know as high as I think I can go 
before uh, it starts to be a little bit too destructive. Um, again, this is, you know, the values you're going to use are on a shot by shot basis. It really is dependent on kind of what's going on in the shot. But if you are looking for some general values to start with, I'll show you here for the brows, I'll typically start with 30. The eyes, I'll typically start with 25. And the mouth, I'll start with 20. So using these values here, you can usually get away with on almost any shot. Uh, because again, uh, with this mouth example here, most of the keyframes that it's removing are going to be in areas like this where there's not as much going on. Uh, it, it is an intelligent process, meaning it knows because of the tracking data where the mouth is moving. And it understands that data like this is, is more important than data like this. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you. If you are using the Maya version of Retargeter, um, this is a small feature that's specific to Maya only. But on the bottom right, we have a drop down here for retarget selected objects or attributes. Now what's really nice about this is I could come in here and say uh, you know 75 percent and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select uh, how about the mouth left right attribute. Now in the channel box I've selected the left side so that uh, Maya considers now that this channel is selected and what I can do is retarget selected attributes and that's going to apply the 75% to only that one attribute. So what's nice about that is uh, you can selectively go through your attributes when you're finished and prune uh, at different values if you'd like. Um, for example, you could set the uh, entire mouth group to 75% and then you could go back to your jaw animation and set that to a lower value. So things like cheeks and you know lip rolls and whatnot might have less keys than your, your jaw animation. So you retain the high fidelity and the timing. Uh, if you have any more questions on pruning, let us know at support.facewordtech.com.